Hey, it's Brian from Winter Garden Yoga. In today's video, we're going to do a follow along practice at the intermediate level. One thing that you'll see for sure is that Winter Garden Yoga, we focus on high benefit, low risk yoga poses. So you will never see super bendy, super stretchy poses at our studio. We focus on the highest benefit with the lowest risk to you. So when you're ready, grab your mat and let's do this. Lie face down on your mat, and let's begin with some nasal breathing. In and out through your nose, and in and out through your tummy. Each time you inhale, you want to feel your tummy press into the ground, and each time you exhale, you want to feel your tummy move away from the ground. And do your best to move your tummy, your ribs, in all different directions, front, back, left, right, and get full, deep inhales and full, deep exhales. Next up is the Sphinx Pose. Press your forearms into the ground. That helps keep your shoulders down and away from your ears. And it's also helping to extend your spine. As you're doing this, try to spread that feeling of extension through your entire spine. Try not to be too compressive in your low back. You may find that you have to come down a little lower you might have to try to push your chest out a little further, but the goal is to try to spread that extension evenly throughout your spine as you continue nasal breathing and diaphragmatically breathing. Here we curl up into what I call the low plank. This is the exact opposite of the Sphinx in that there's a lot of spinal flexion here. Now you're flexing your spine. You're taking your spine a completely different direction. You have to tuck your pelvis under a lot and use your abdominals a lot. From there, we come into a variation of the locust pose. Slowly peel your skull, shoulders, and a few ribs off the ground. And maybe your arms lift up off the ground as well. Maybe they don't, and that's okay. It's sort of like a sphinx with no hands. So we're looking for that spinal extension, this time in more of a strength type of movement versus pushing with your arms. You're actually lifting with your back muscles. Hands under your shoulders, push yourself to all fours, tuck your toes under, and we get to downward dog. Do your best to try to get your hips up as high as possible. Don't worry too much if your legs are super straight or super bent. We're just starting. We're just getting warmed up. Do your best to connect with your breathing in and out through your nose in and out through your tummy. Take a little baby step forward, another little baby step forward. Try to keep your chest up and walk yourself back into what's called the rearward shift. You're trying to load up your hamstrings and your glutes and keep your spine slightly extended. 
and we stand up, reset your posture, getting tall through mountain pose, and we prepare for balance pose. Bring your feet together. I'm going to put all the weight into my left leg. Bend my right knee, spin the right knee out. My foot comes to my calf. My hands are in prayer position. Hold and breathe. Now be sure to work here. Your bent knee is dying to point forward. So use your glutes to pull that knee open. Try to tuck your pelvis under and keep your shoulders down and your abs braced. Gently come out and then we switch sides. All the weight into my right leg. Left knee bends slightly and I bring my foot to my calf. Hold and breathe. These are not passive exercises. I'm using my abs muscles to tuck my pelvis and I'm using my glute muscles to try to open up the left hip. Calm face, calm breathing. And we prepare for warrior three. All the weight onto your left leg. Make sure you've got some clearance with your right leg. Bend at the waist. Maybe you come to the shape of a capital T. Maybe you don't. Hands out to a T or not. And just hold and breathe. If you're watching, you see I get into a little bit of turbulence here. But my face remains calm. Breath remains steady. And we come out of it all the way into the right leg. Reach back with the left leg. Hands out to a T or not. As long as you have one foot on the ground and another foot off the ground, you're fine. Just keep practicing, keep breathing. And come out of it nice and easy. Mountain pose for a postural reset. Rear word shift. Feet about hip width apart. Palms touch the front of your thighs. A slight bend in the knee. And reach your hips rearward. Your arms are straight. You'll touch your kneecaps and that's kind of when you stop, hold, and breathe. You're trying to load your hamstrings and your glutes. Try to keep your spine kind of extended. Definitely keep your arms straight. And stand up. Reset your pelvis, reset your spine. Here we go into another rearward shift. Soft knees, anterior tilt of the pelvis, and you just shift rearward. The shins, the kneecaps, the thigh bones, all those parts shift rearward. Try not to let your knees drift out over your feet. They're trying to drift backwards over your ankles or maybe even your heel bones. Come to mountain pose. Reset your posture. Gently release the standing sequence. My right leg is going to step back and wide to the right. Get my feet pretty wide apart, toes pointing forward. 
front foot goes to 90 degrees, rear foot stays at zero degrees. Bend the front leg as much as you can. Hands out to a T and we get what's called warrior two. I'm doing my best to externally rotate my shoulders. That's the same as turning your elbow pits up toward the ceiling. Steady breathing. Straighten that leg, your front leg, and then turn your feet to the opposite side. 90 degrees on one foot, zero degrees on that rear foot, warrior two opposite side. Externally rotating my shoulders. It's as if I'm turning my elbow pits toward the ceiling, corkscrewing my shoulders into the socket, holding and breathing. Straighten your front leg. And we'll go to the other side. 90 degrees on the front foot. Zero degrees on the rear foot. We'll come to warrior two first. And when you feel established, you're gonna reach out over your front leg till you just can't reach anymore. And try to move through your shoulders, not so much through your spine, but through your shoulders to set you up for side angle pose. Now the goal is to try to make your bottom rib cage the same length as your top rib cage. And that's going to require a little bit of manipulation through your shoulders and through your hips. Come up to warrior two. Straighten your legs. We'll go to the other side. Check your feet. Check your stance. Warrior two. And when you're ready, reach out over your front leg till you just can't reach anymore. And then bring your hands into position for side angle pose. Concentrate on your bottom ribs. So in a way, it's as if your upper body is trying not to bend to the side. And that'll help create length on the bottom set of ribs. Deep breathing. Come on up to warrior two. Straighten your front leg. 